An air tank has a gauge pressure of 150 kilopascals and a temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. The air is heated isometrically to 70 degrees Celsius with the atmospheric pressure of 765 millimeters of mercury or MMHG. What is the final pressure? So uh, let's draw our schematic diagram first. Say this is our tank. Uh, let's put a gauge pressure here. And um, the problem says it has a pressure, a gauge pressure of 150 kilopascals. And it also has a temperature. So this is, let's say, PT1 of 28 degrees Celsius. Now, this is heated to um, and heated isometrically. So this is, say, this is our state two. This is our state one. And uh, still, it has the same gauge pressure. I mean, the gauge pressure, let's put that there. And um, it is heated isometrically, heated isometrically to 70, 70 degrees Celsius. So it's two temperature at state two. This is equal to 70 degrees Celsius. Now, with the atmospheric pressure of, so if you've got the atmospheric pressure, PATM is equal to 765 millimeters of mercury. MMHJ. So we are asked, what will be the final gauge pressure? So what will this be? Okay, so um, you can, we can treat this as an ideal gas problem. And um, if you can recall the combined ideal gas law, um, it states that pressure times the volume over the temperature is just a constant. So this is constant throughout the process. And this means that um, State one, P V P one V one over T one is just equal to P two V two over T two. Now the process is indicated in the problem is mentioned to be isometric. This is heated isometrically, so that means to say by isometric that means volume is constant. So with volume is constant. This means that V one is equal to V2, hence we can cancel this out. So we're left with our working equation. If we can rearrange that, we'll be able to solve our P2. So let's just do that. So that's gonna be P2 is equal to um, P1, which just supposed that there. So this is T2 over T1. And from here, um, all we need to do is just plug in the values that we have and we, we should be able to answer our problem. But take note, the given pressure is in engaged pressure. Um, always remember if working with ideal gas, always use absolute temperatures and absolute pressures. So here, let's just convert that directly. Um, our problem, our P1 is um, 150 kilopascals, our gauge pressure. So I'm just gonna do, um, let's just recall this one first. The absolute pressure is just equal to the atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure. This is just basic of, of pressure. So um, our P1 then will become, you have our gauge pressure here is 150 plus atmospheric pressure. We're also provided with a particular atmospheric pressure. If not, you can just use the standard um, atmospheric pressure. But since we're provided with a particular atmospheric pressure, that's what we're going to use. So we have P1 is equal to um, 150 kilopascals. This is the gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure, which is equal to um, 765. Okay, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna put the unit first. So this is 150 kilopascals well, plus um, 765. Um, this is MMHG, right? So we can just do a quick conversion here. So we have a factor of an atmospheric pressure. I know that an atmospheric pressure is equal to 101.325 kilopascals. And also an atmospheric pressure is also equal to um, 760 uh, mmHg. This is the average um, atmospheric pressure standard. So basically if I'll cancel, this can be canceled out, this can be canceled out, I'll be left with kilopascals as my unit. So but this is our P1 here and our T2 over T1. So let's put that here. Take note, I'm using in my formula a, a capital T just to remind me that it needs to be an absolute temperature because what I have here in, the, in my given, I'm indicating that it's a small T here. So 
just again a reminder for me that, that I have to still convert them to um, absolute. So um, my T2 is 70 degrees Celsius, and to make that a uh, to make it that to Kelvin's, so all we need to do is just add 273. So that will be Kelvin's already um, over T1, which is 28 plus 273. So we have the value of our P2 in terms of kilopascals because this will the units here will just cancel out. Um, so our P2 is equal to this number. And if we got our calculator, that is uh, 150. Uh, 150 plus 765, 765. Okay, we'll convert this one first. We'll have a fraction of 101.325 over 760. And we'll close this parenthesis. And this is all over T2, which is 70, 70. Uh, plus 273 over 28, 28 plus uh, 273. And this is equal to 287.15. So this is 287.15. Our units is kilopascals. Take note, um, this P2 is still in absolute because we've already converted that to absolute. So we are asked the final gauge pressure. So basically, we can just convert this one. We'll just put that the conversion factor straight here. This is kilopascals. Um, I'm going to be using this same conversion. So this is going to be um, our basic. Or actually, what I'm going to do is this is not what I'll be doing. I'll just this is going to be less than the atmospheric pressure of 101. No, the atmospheric pressure, I'm provided with an atmospheric pressure of um, 765, because this is the atmospheric pressure, 765 mmH3. This is the, the given atmospheric pressure. And I'll, I'm still going to use the conversion here, which is 101.325 over 760 mmHg, this will cancel out. This is in kilopascals. So basically, my final answer will be 287 uh, minus 765. And this is multiplied by the conversion factor of 101.325 101 over, this is over 760. And this should be my final answer in kilopascal. So that's going to be 185.16, 185.16. This is in kilopascals. That's going to be it. And this is our final answer. What is the temperature of four liters of water at 20 degrees Celsius after 500 calories of heat have been added? So uh, let's do our schematic diagram. Say, um, have a rectangular container here, which contains um, water. So I've got water inside. And uh, this is the volume here is four liters. Now it also has a temperature of the initial temperature, which is 20 degrees Celsius. Now, yeah, um, say I have fire here or I've input um, heat. Can you note that with Q? And uh, this is going to be 500 calories of heat. So we are asked what will be the final temperature after adding this 500 calories of heat. So, or if you can recall, since this is just a topic of sensible heating, because um, if you apply um, heat to something, it tends it tends to to increase its temperature. Otherwise, its phase will change. So um, in this case. We have our heat here, and uh, if you can recall the sensible heat equation, it's just the, the um, heat is equal to the mass of whatever substance is heated, multiplied by the heat capacity, multiplied by the change of temperature, delta T. In this case, uh, we have delta T is just um, mc delta T. This is T2 minus T1. Now, most of the times when you heat up something in the real world, you'll be at, um, we'll, we'll, 
it will be uh, this is open to the atmosphere or the atmospheric pressure or the, at the pressure is just constant. So most of the time we will be using our, our heat capacity at constant pressure here. So um, that's going to be CP. Now, uh, now all we need to do is we have to identify the final pressure. Um, basically, we just have to rearrange the equation to make this um, in terms of or to, for, for us to find the, the, sec the final temperature. So that's going to be Q is equal to MCP. This is equal to T2 minus T1. Therefore, our T2 is equal to, that's Q all over MCP plus T1. Now we have our um, Q here is 500. So from here, this is our, our final working equation, by the way. And um, from here, we have everything that we need, except that you need, we are not provided with a mass. Um, also, we don't, we're not provided with the heat capacity. So um, this, this implies that you need to, problems like this, you need to make sure that you, you know the basics of like, the, how to get the mass with a volume using the, the definition of density, we can use that. And um, also, you need to be familiar, familiarize at least with the values of the standard values of the specific heat of, of a, most, this, you know, a common substance, say water. Um, here, uh, let's just use our, our um, knowledge of defined density. I'm going to denote that with um, raw is equal to mass over volume. So we have we have our volume and we, we have to look for the mass. This is gonna be, um, just rearrange this one first. So mass is equal to density over volume. If we're not provided with the density, but we can assume this to be a standard um, 1000 kilogram per cubic meter. That's a, a, a standard density of water. Right? standard conditions. So um, this is, that's the density we're provided with the volume. So volume is um, four liters, this one. And um, there is 1,000 liters. If we'll convert this further, this is 1,000 liters per cubic meter. Uh, this is also uh, something that you, may, you, you need to be familiarized you need to be familiar with the conversion of, of units. So um, basically, this if you do the unit analysis, this will cancel out, this will cancel out, this will cancel out as well in this one. So we're left with kilograms. So if our answer, this, was, this, is, this will also cancel out as well. So our answer is going to be four kilograms of water. Oops. So... This is four kilograms, and that's what we're going to be using here. So our Q is um, 500 calories. This is 500 calories. Now, 500 calories, we, we need to convert that to um, kilojoule because we, we can, it depends on what CP will, you will be using. But I know that CP of water is also, um, this is, I can use the calorie or kilocalorie, or I can just use the, um, the 4.186. So let me just use that because it's a common um, value with the, the units. Um, so I'm going to convert this to kilojoule and or joule. So um, this is going to be um, for one calorie. There is 4.186 joules. This is all over. So I already have this in terms of joules. This will become, cal this will cancel out later on. And um, over our mass, which is a four kilogram, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that 4,000 grams. 4,000 grams, this is 4,000 kilograms is equal to four, four grams. And um, the CP I'm gonna be using is 4.186 joules per gram pre Celsius or Kelvin. Oh, this is actually a change of, change of temperature. So um, degree Celsius or 
um, the change in degrees Celsius is just equal to the change in um, degrees Kelvin. I mean, change in Kelvins. So um, this is this is going to be. This will cancel out. This will cancel out. This can also cancel out. This will cancel out. This will cancel out. And this one. So we're left with degrees Celsius here, and plus our T one, which is equal to. You know, can I just move this one first? Uh, or that's okay. So um, our T1 is equal to 20 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius. So basically my answer here, T2 would be in terms of degrees Celsius. Now, all we need to do is input that in our calculator and that's equal to, um, do a fraction first. So that's uh, 500 multiplied by a fraction, 4. Point, it's not really a fraction, so I'm just, 4.186 all over. Um, actually, this will just cancel out as well. This one and this one. So I'll be left with 500 over 4,000. So this is, let's make things easy. It's 500 over 4,000. 4,000 plus uh, 20 degrees Celsius. And this should be my final answer. And this is in degrees Celsius. So that's gonna be 20.125. So that's 20.125 degrees Celsius. And this should be the answer. Air with a volume of 500 cubic centimeters is measured at a pressure of 710 millimeters Hg or millimeters of mercury, mmHg absolute and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. What is the final volume or the volume of the air at 760 mmHg absolute and zero degrees Celsius? So I'm gonna um, draw this schematic diagram. So this is our 500 um, air with a 500 um, cubic centimeters of volume. So this is some V1. Uh, V1 here is 500 cubic centimeters. This is a given uh, pressure. So I'm going to use the P1 here. This is 710 mmHg. So this is our state one, by the way. And uh, our temperature, we're also provided with temperature. T1 is equal to 25 degrees Celsius. Now, um, so basically, we're not provided with what type of process, but uh, let's just draw the uh, state two here. We're provided with the properties at state two. So what is the volume? So we're asked what is the volume at 760 mmHg. So this is P2, this is P2, um, 760 mmHg. And this is our temperature T1 or T2 rather. This is our state two and uh, this is going to be zero degrees Celsius. So we are asked what is the volume here. Now, even though we don't know the process, so we basically don't know what, how, how the, how the process, um, or what was the process done on the system to achieve from this um, properties to these properties. Um, but then, if you can recall the combined ideal gas law equation. Um, means that, or we can just solve for V. Um, and the ideal gas equation is just um, pressure multiplied by volume over temperature is, is constant. And um, with this, this means that P1, V1 is equal to, or T1 rather, is equal to P2, V2 over T2. We're asked for volume two. So all you need to do is rearrange this equation um, in terms of V2, so this is V2 on the left side, and this is equal to, um, so V1 here, I'm just um, organize the device, T2 over T1, and this is uh, P1 over P2. So I'm not gonna use the, the units here for temperatures and pressure because they will just cancel out. But as you can see from here, um, Basically, you've got everything already in the given to answer the problem. So all you need to do is plug in the values. Uh, our V1 is 500 um, cubic centimeters multiplied by the temperature. And take note, um, the, I'm, I'm writing my, my equation 
with the T is my cap is capital T to indicate that this is a the ab, an absolute where I need to convert the, the small letter T here, the given, as uh, to, to absolute temperatures. Because if you're working with ideal gas equation, make sure to always use the absolute temperature and pressures. So here, T2 will be zero degrees Celsius. So we'll convert that to Kelvin. That's zero plus 273. This makes it 273 Kelvins and our T1 is 25 plus 273 uh, multiplied by P1. Our P1 is, this is already an absolute as indicated in the problem, P1 MMHG and um, MMHG. This is also an absolute, the P2. So um, both are an absolute already. So P2 or P1 rather is 710. And um, P2 is 760 mmH3. And the units will just cancel out. So our V2 will then be in terms of cubic centimeters. And um, from here, just input that in the calculator. So that's 500 cubic centimeters multiplied by 273 Kelvins over 25 plus 273 Kelvins. We'll multiply that with Let's just use another fraction again. So that's 710 over 760. And this should be the answer. So that's 427.92. 427, 427.92. And the units will be or is cubic centimeters. And this is um, the final volume.